Charter Local Edition, I'm Brad Pomerantz. I'm glad you're with us. Our guest today is Branwyn Williams. She's a professor at the WM Keck Science Department, which is part of a consortium of three colleges, Scripps, Claremont McKenna, and Pitzer. I am glad you are with us. You are an environmental scientist, and you recently had quite an explosive article come out in Science Magazine. Tell us about it. This article, what we wanted to explore was how the seawater chemistry in the oceans have changed in the past. And we wanted to create kind of a baseline or a context to interpret how seawater chemistry is changing now and is projected to change in the future. And what you're looking at is CO2 admission, emissions, mm -hmm. and those come substantially from fossil fuels. Yes. So with the current ocean acidification that's going on, the burning of fossil fuels is putting large amounts of CO2 into the atmosphere. Some of the CO2 is dissolving into the seawater and causing a decrease in seawater pH. Okay, so explain the alleged apparent severity of the problem because the words were very clear in this article. From the study, what we found is we looked at different ocean acidification events over the past 300 million years in the geologic record and we found that there is no parallel event has occurred in the past. Zero. Zero. Never. So what's happening is unprecedented in the past 300 million years. And so you and your co-authors have come to the conclusion that this is happening because humans are emitting too much CO2 in the environment. We're interpreting that this is a unique event that's occurring and the likely driver is that we're putting the CO2 into the atmosphere and this is causing the change in the seawater. So how is that impacting the oceans? It's making it a lot more difficult for a lot of marine organisms to live. And there's a lot of uh, fantastic biological studies going on right now that we're finding that decreasing seawater pH, making the oceans more acidic essentially, causes it, makes it more difficult for a lot of organisms such as corals to grow and this is going to have severe implications for what our oceans look like in terms of the biodiversity of organisms that are living there. So we know from the science that the impacts are clear. Are we at a point of no return? I don't know if we would ever be able to say that until we're looking back in hindsight. I see. The um, pH of the oceans has dropped by 0.1 pH unit, which is an order of magnitude faster than it's ever happened in the record that we looked at. In 300 million in years. In 300 million years. So the rate of change is very dramatic. The How fast did it happen, that one point drop? In about the past 100 years. So kind okay. of um, 150 years is when it started, and it's been escalating. So the, the decrease is um, becoming more rapid. In the next 100 years, it might drop by another 0.2 or 0.3 pH units. What can we do? What can you and I do? to try to tackle this problem? The stem of this problem is the CO2 emissions. So we want to try and reduce CO2 emissions into the atmosphere. Um, the easiest way to do that is to reduce your carbon footprint. So. And how do we reduce our carbon footprint? Just you and me. Yeah. I don't want to get involved in a whole 300 million American conversation. Mm -hmm. You and me, and I, you. <laughs> <laughs> I try and reduce my carbon footprint. So I try and stay local. I try and reduce my transportation. I, I try and use public transportation or walk or ride my bicycle, get out of the car. I try and travel less. I also hybrids. try hybrids. Hybrids are good. Hybrids have other difficulties sometimes with batteries, but hybrids are good. It reduces the CO2. LED lights. Yeah, those things are all fantastic to reduce a household. Eating local, if you look at a lot of our produce, a lot of it comes from far away. So if you can eat local, it's going to reduce the carbon footprint of the products getting to you. Because I think a lot of us feel overwhelmed mm -hmm. by the conversation surrounding global warming, mm -hmm. but your message, it seems to me, is each of us can take individual steps. Absolutely, if everybody makes small changes in their lifestyle, that's gonna have a big difference in what's happening on a global scale. Congratulations, Professor Williams, on your article. March 2nd, Science, it came out, the geological record of ocean acidification. She's a professor at Scripps, Claremont, McKenna, and Pitzer. I'm Brad Palmer. Thanks for joining us back to HLN. You know what happens when you don't know your politics. Watch Charter California Edition. In-depth half-hour interviews with our elected officials, educators, and community leaders. Tune to Charter's original programming on Channel 101 at these times to learn more about our community, our state, and our future. Charter California Edition with Brad Pomerantz. Stay current, California.